Good morning, everyone. It's the day, December 6th. You've waited so patiently for um, our Make It Your Own Way embroidery class to start. So Jackie, aloha. Actually, I'm going to be going for two weeks in February with uh, Joan Wolfram and Dara Williamson. Very, very excited. No doubt I'll be taking something like this with me to work on when we're there. So uh, let me just talk, let get, let's get some people on here before we get going. Um, I just have to tell you, yesterday I put my tree up. It is so sad. <laughs> it's the worst, just the worst. And my girlfriend Karen said, Alex, you've had that tree for, she said 15 years. I don't think that long, but certainly over 10, maybe 12 or 13. I paid... I think $60 for it. <laughs> Why is it falling apart? I don't know. So I have to show you, even the top where you're supposed to put a star, well, that thing <laughs> wouldn't even work. <laughs> so I mean, it is like the Grinch. It is like Charlie Brown. Um, it is the saddest tree on the face of the earth. And of course, this is the year we're having the whole family here. Uh, and it would, I gotta tell you guys, it was hard. Nobody warned me that it would be hard. I gave away all of the kids' ornaments to them. Joey got transportation, Adair got lambs. So um, I incorporated in my parents, all right? And even though my mom was not with us this way, she was still with me. And so as I put up the tree and put on her decorations, memories just flooded me. So for instance, <laughs> this little guy we got at Pedestable Docky in San Francisco. We would go every year before Christmas and um, my parents would buy one ornament because if I remember at the time, um, they were very, very expensive. And so this little guy is missing a foot. <laughs> I love it. But it made me sad. And then uh, this I wanted to show you. Back in the day when I was in junior high, I made this for my parents. And that's just paper. That's all it is. And it's two-sided and it's a mobile. So if any of you are in the crafting mode, I would grab your uh, watercolor paper and commission you, a la Joanne Sharp, um, to get going on it and make some ornaments. I had, there were two ornaments I made that were inside tuna cans. <laughs> They're gone everywhere there. But anyways, I knew I was in a little bit of trouble when, um, when I sat down and I couldn't put the tree up because it was so ugly, number one, and so many memories came flooding back. And I sat and played Bubble Explode on my phone. <laughs> That's when I knew I was in trouble. Speaking of that, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. Um, yeah, my, Joyce, mine is shedding horribly, but too old to buy a new one. I still love all my decorations and know where each one comes from. It's exactly right. And so, um, anyways, it's up. It's up and it's done. And the fact you can see through it because it's so rotten, I just don't care. In fact, my parents fashioned their tree. I think they got it at Walmart for 15 bucks one year, and that was their tree for the end. So I kind of held that with pride, but I've got to let my pride go. All right, so I am re... Oh, 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 oh. Let me see, what do we have here? Oh, I want to show you... No, I don't want to show you... Oh, yes, I want to tell you this. Um, I shared this last Wednesday when the... BOM kits went up for sale. It's by um, the pattern is by Irene Blank from Down Under, and in fact, I'm going to be interviewing her later for a future podcast here or whatever this thing is. And um, Lennox just ran to it and fell in love with it. Now, this quilt of Irene's that I'm just enjoying the heck out of in my sewing room. Um, was done from a lot of her scraps, okay? So Kristen, as we shared on Wednesday, uh, went to great pains to put together a new kit for us. Um, she was able to do, I'm looking at it, able to duplicate some of the fabrics, some not. Uh, our kit is a little bit lighter than Irene's because that's what we could get. She went to over, I think she said nine or 10 different manufacturers to pull this kit together for us. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, we only have about 20% left. 
were out were under a hundred, okay? And um, when they're gone, they are gone. Uh, there's no way, like in spinning spools, where we could go back and get kits. There's no way that was going to happen. It's it's done and it's done. It is a great quilt for scrap quilts. So if you miss out on that, no big deal. And all you have to do to participate in this is um, be a star member in order to get the free patterns every month. We do ship the entire kit at once. Now, I don't think I was clear on Wednesday because I've gotten a couple email from people. Those kits were not packed by us, by somebody else, and they were absolutely beautiful. But man, they were stuffed in there like a hot dog, okay? Like a sausage. And so when Kristen and I started undoing the kit, we knew we could never get it back to its original format, although we got darn close. In one kit only, one, it went out with a signed block from me and a ring of Quilter Select 80 weight thread. And that was for destroying your kit. And, and it was so funny when I took the kit back out to work, Julie says, well, who do I give it to? And I said, it's up to you. <laughs> just pick somebody randomly so no the ring did not come with every kit and I guess Kristen and I did not make that clear uh, you might want to go watch last Wednesday's vidcast again to see that okay so um if you now let's get back to silk all right I did I have done a where is it uh, we had three kits available for the silks all right for our embroidery we had a bright kit, right? This was uh, mine from before, a bright kit. This has Debbie Schnabel written on it too with what's going on in here. You might wanna go watch her show because she does extraordinary things with very simple stitches of which you'll be doing the same thing. I had done, and I'm currently still working on, a neutrals right here. Uh, let me see, how's that gonna go? I decided I, it was too small of a piece in the center, so I added the borders to it after I did a majority of the centers. And you can see right in here, now I'm taking some of these circles and making them go all the way to the edge. I think that's gonna add a lot. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on the outside edge. I might do some Cindy Needham machine quilting, maybe. And so I decided to go for the pastel set. And I didn't actually take a pastel set because we were clearly running out of these things in jackrabbit speed. So I had to go to my personal collection, pull out the same fabrics that were in the pastel set, and I did secure a box of threads. And actually, these were thread colors I didn't have because normally I don't work in pastels. So I'm going to tell you right now, it was hard creating the background and for me, and I'm gonna take you through the process of creating, John's gotta get that, creating the background, all right? If you're working with silk, and of course you don't have to be working with silk, you could be working with linens, you could be working with anything, but if you're working with silk, you absolutely 100% are going to want to back it with, um, with I'm using Quilter Select Fabric Prep. It is a super sheer, um, stretchy, fusible on one side. This is not a fusible like when you think of fusing applique. This is simply to prep your fabric. If I were working with linens, I might use Fabric Prep too on it. And also for my inner border here, let me just put on this camera. For my inner border, I use this from the Jennifer Sampoo kit. It was that sparkly stuff and had a little bit of an attitude, so I put fabric prep on it also. So you can see here on the back of this, um, everything has fabric prep on it. Now, I also want to mention that the back of this is a hot mess. Unlike when I do red work, when I want it perfectly i want it as beautiful on the back as i do on the front but because this fabric prep is on here the reason you want it as beautiful as you can get it on the back when you're doing red work is you don't want like red tails coming through and stuff like that well this fabric prep 
masks everything that's going on on the front. So the back can be a hot mess. This is not, and I wanna be clear, how I do red work. And I believe I've even done a segment on this when we started this whole thing two years ago, practically. So when you, when you get your fat quarter bundles or dig in your stash, this is what your silk is going to look like. It can get, it, it, it really can get naughty on the edges. Like, let's take a look here. Although this has fabric prep on it, you can see how it frays and stuff like that. So on one side of fabric prep, there's bumpies. I better turn my iron on. On the other side, it's smooth. You're gonna turn your iron on to a medium. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to watch out for, I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me get this camera down just a little bit and then clear it in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure when you put this fabric prep on that you don't have any bandits underneath it. By bandits, come on, get in focus. Wow, it's just getting worse, isn't it? Huh, well, you're gonna to have to trust me on this. Right here, there's a bandit. Where'd it go? Huh, maybe there wasn't a bandit. Oh, maybe it's on my fabric prep. No, I guess it's just the weave. Oh, that's funny. Wait a minute. I'm going crazy because I can see it right there. Well, anyways, I guess it's not really there and I'm seeing things. <laughs> so um, you're going to want to make sure you don't have colored threads under there before you prep this up. Because when I was prepping up the one that I'm going to be showing you how I got to today, um, there were things that got underneath it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bumpy side, you can feel it, and that's the adhesive, and you're gonna put it on the silk. So you're gonna have the smooth side on top and the bumpy side on the bottom. I like to put, I did, it's not working. John just said refocus. Okay, that's better, I can see my ring. Yeah, that's better, okay. By the way, this ring is super special to me. Um, John gave it to me when we got married. My jewelry is very personal. It was a garnet, and then it had this little diamond. And then when John gave me a big diamond, I put my wedding diamond right there, I had the jeweler do that. And then I had my grandma's diamond put there. And then when Paul passed, I put three of his diamonds on. So every single diamond on this is exceedingly meaningful to me just like the one on this hand that was my mom wore for 50 years. Um, okay, diverting, not cool. So what you're going to do, okay, good, my iron's um, heated up now. I'm going to put the fabric prep on top, again, bumpy on the down, bottom, bottom side, and I'm just going to take my iron and just hold it, and I have it on a medium heat, no steam. How do I know if it's working? Well, we'll see in a minute. Just take my time. Try to avoid tucks in here because this stuff really is very, very flimsy. Okay. How do you know if it's good? Let's see. Well, this part isn't good. That part's good. I'm going to do a little bit more. Really make sure it's down. I would not go super hot because I think you can overheat this material and then that will mess it up. So just take your time. I would take the fabric prep that is in your package and do it to the full fat quarter pieces that we sent you, or fat eights. I don't know, what did we send you? Anyways, do the whole thing, okay? And then you're good to go. Then when you cut it, it's not gonna fray to kingdom come. It looks like I missed something there. I'm not too bad. So that's how you prep your silk. Oh, I'm gonna stay on after for a few minutes and watch for questions. You can pre-wash your silk. I don't, because I don't intend for these quilts or to ever be washed. But yes, you can do that. And is there a right side and a wrong side to the silk? That's an excellent question. Sometimes one side is more bumpy than the other. Uh, it's your choice what you want up. I want the bumps up. That's just my preference, all right? Because I think it adds texture to the whole thing. So here I want to show you 
what my new background looks like and how I got to it, all right? I did this last Thursday. You can see on the back, it's all been fabric craft. I also, for the most part, have opened up my seams, which means you want to use thread colors. Like I wouldn't want to use black on this or anything because when you press things open, you see the little, you know, threads like this. So here's the front of it. And this was hard. <laughs> this was really, really hard for me. So let me take you through the thought process of how I got to here. Remember, this is called Make It your own. So I got out the fabrics. Let me, where I got to get through here. I got out the fabrics and I just put them on the table. Those are the colors in the um, pastel kit. And I looked at them and I just started playing with them. Not cutting them, playing with them. All right. And I had all different sizes that I had to deal with. That blue there, that was the only piece of that blue that I had. So I knew I was not about to cut starting, start cutting until I knew what I was doing. I took out the pink because it was too much for me. Let me go here. Let's take a look at it with the pink. Let me get rid of that one. That pink is just like a jolt, whereas the other four are kind of analogous. So let's take a look at that. Here's this mini color wheel of Jones. You've got here, let me, how can I, I know how I can do it. I'll put it on this camera. Let's put this down here. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not going to break this out of the package, but you can see here, you've got the green, you've got the blue and you've got this teal and that's kind of kind of right in there and then woohoo across the color wheel actually a tertiary triangly is the magenta pink right in here so you know when you're working with tertiaries it's going to pop like there's no tomorrow so i didn't feel that it was um, appropriate to have a big block of pink. That's It just kind of started talking to me like that. Oh, also, I want to say this particular piece is uh, 14 by 20. I wouldn't go much bigger than that because you want to be able to work it with your hands, okay? And I'll talk about a hoop and I'll talk about all that in a moment, but let's get through the color. I'm going to tell you right now, for those of you that got the neutral quilts, um, it is probably going to be the easiest combination to put together. Let's revisit this one with the brights. And these are not the fabrics that were in your kit, but it's brights. I then stuck to the areas of the brights where I was going to stitch. Okay, I'm going all over the map here. You might want to watch this a couple times. But for me, I wanted to do something that was subtle, like in this neutrals, so I could just ignore the background and just stitch my little heart away. So you got some decisions to make. I would say, um, don't let the piecing be the star of the show. Let your stitching be the star of the show. And they're gonna be really easy stitches. Okay, so yeah, Karen, I just said, this finished base was 14 by 20. It can be anything, actually. I'm this one, before I added the border, it was too small. I felt, well, I also didn't like the way it was just, I didn't have these things. So that's why I put on the extra and went from there. Again, this is make it your own. And, and this is really scary for me because I know a lot of you work like X, Y, Z, you know? No, you are going to play and have fun, all right? So thanks, Joanne. I was just talking about you. So, okay, let's, where, where did we go? So... Here was that, and that pink disturbed me. I pulled it out, and I showed you why it disturbed me. But in all due respect to the quilt, I had to put the pink in because we put it in your kit. <laughs> That's why I just did a little bit. I, I'm just folding, you guys. I am just folding fabric and seeing what looks good. And actually, that skinny strip I like a lot. I don't know why I didn't stick with that. So oh, I decided to cut. Oh, so there we've got. There we've got the blue, and that is it for the blue. So I've got, I wanted, it's probably my favorite color in the whole kit, and so I wanted to maximize all of it. So I cut it into a square. 
um, and then I worked off of that. So here we have the blue, the, the green, and the pink. I still, I don't have the turquoise in there yet, or the teal, for lack of better, turquoise. I'm just playing, I am just playing on my cutting board, just like that. Um, Joanne, I'll get to your question in a moment. Um, so then I actually sewed it together and I didn't like it. So I took it apart. Oh no, but I did throw the threads on it and I go, oh my gosh, this is going to be beautiful. That got, that got me very, very excited. All right. So then I decided because it was such a strong vertical pink or horizontal actually on the end piece, I needed it to show up another place. And then that's where I pieced that teal with the pink. Okay. So that's how I got to this. I'm pretty sure, let me measure this. I cut these strips at two inches. Um, and then I just built off of it. You're just going to have to do your math work. Now, what you could do is take a piece of paper and just draw out little configurations and see what looks good for you. Take your color pencil, but don't stress out over this at all. All right. And I will talk about cotton at the end. So the other thing I want to talk about is within the kit that we sent you, and I know a lot of you are doing this um, without the kit, the needle, there are so many needles that you can use. And I remember one time somebody said to me, well, what needle are you using? And I would just say a sharp one. I mean, I don't know. Well, this is what I've learned from taking a Sue Spargo's class and from hanging out with Wendy. Um, so a Sashiko needle, Let's see how good my art is, is basically the same from, from the bottom to the top. Okay, it, it doesn't go like this where the eye goes and get bigger. Okay, a Sasha Go is more straight and there's different sizes in it. This, I would say now, is my go-to needle. And in your kit, I believe we gave you different sizes. All right, so um, just use what's comfortable for you or use what the eye of the needle will accept. Um, like the larger the needle, the bigger the eye. And I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you I've got a whole tin of um, needle threaders because I can't thread these stupid needles. Now, um, speaking of not threading these stupid needles, there's so much out there as far as embroidery floss goes. We, we in the kit, these are by um, Wonderfill. I like this. Are you ready for this? Yes, we are ready for this. Um, these are a number eight pearl cotton, and you don't have to split it. You can't split it because it's a pearl. I love the way it's got the variegation in it so that when you stitch, you have wonderful things happen. But there is nothing wrong, in fact, this is mine, if you go to like um, a craft store and get DMC, not a problem. DMC comes and it has six strands in it, all right? I would be inclined to use two strands. I had a ton of these threads or in a bundle like this and I couldn't find it. So I, I will warn you that we will, some of us will be working with metallics and metallics can be really naughty. I'm just putting it out there. We won't play with metallics until we've got something going. I wouldn't start with metallics. Don't do that to yourself. But if you're with metallics, you're gonna want some sort of thread conditioner. And um, this is the one I prefer, Thread Magic. It, 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 it's like 10 bucks and it kind of freaked me out the first time I had to buy it because I'm thinking, wow, 10 bucks for this? Well, this is saving my metallics life. And in the kit, or if you, let me grab the metallic over here. Um, you had the option to purchase this thread uh, as an add-on, and it is the same weight as the number eight Wonderfill, but it, it just was a little tougher to work with, and I would have been sunk without Thread Magic, okay? So 
The other thing I want you to think about, okay, wait, or, or books, okay, books. There, we saw last uh, for a Wednesday that um, one of you sent me, come on, get out of there. One of you sent me uh, an embroidery little book that I think was like 35 cents or something. They're all good and they're all different. They all bring something a little bit different to the plate, okay? And um, we are going to be sticking with simple stitches in my book. If you want complicated stitches, that's when you book over to Sue Spargo because I'm still learning from that. But simple stitches with stunning results. So let's take a look at this. You know, this, what I'm doing here, and we'll see if we can get a thing on here. Let me see if I can get down closer just for grins. Basically, we have um, we have like straight stitches, like right there. That's like a red work stitch. We've got chain stitches. That's the hardest one. And then we have, um, where's that little guy? Then we have, oh, here's like another a red work stitch, but then I've wrapped it. We've got French knots on it. This is a little tricky, not that big of a deal. This is super easy, just straight stitches. Um, this is just so much fun. And so let me show you the book that, besides the little, the little book, which I couldn't put my hands on this morning, I don't know where it is, that came with the kit. Um, we recommended this book by uh, Christine Brown, but I'm telling you right now, there are tons of books out there. Now why, and I, I don't have them all, but I've certainly made a dent in the market. Why I like Christine's is she will take a stitch, like an embroider, okay, um, straight stitches. Um, where, here we go. All these different stitches, and then how, if you learn a straight stitch, then these are the things you can do with it. If you learn an outline stitch, then these are the things you can do with it. Um, knotted, well, we're going to do French knots. These are things that you can do with it. So this particular book is very different from other books, but I thought it was the best general how-to book, and it does have a little bit of left and right-handed in it. Um, I couldn't find the little card we sent you, the little book, but this is another pocket guide that I have. I don't think we have it in the store, but it's just a lot of great things. The other thing I would do is consider uh, today or tomorrow going to the library and seeing what they've got for embroidery. And, and I mean, I've got some that are from Japan that are just out of this world. But again, we're going to um, stick it. We are going to um, stick to simple stitches and then how far you take it is up to you. So yes, the kits are long gone. Um, and uh, Kristen had a very hard time getting the silks, the ones we even got. Now, one of you asked, can I use cotton? Absolutely. Here's the one that I did in Debbie Schnabel's class. This is the first attempt at just, you know, doing fun stuff. This was the kit she gave us. It's just cottons. And then we just put it down and did stitches. I mean, how simple. These are simple stitches. Now, in Debbie's class, she has you put batting behind it, and then she has you put a backing behind it. I, I'm i skipping that, and look how rotten that back looks. Doesn't matter. It's not about the back. It's about the front. I'm choosing to not use batting on mine. Some of you might choose to use batting. Top, backing, or batting, backing. But what in whatever case, I would at least put fabric prep on the back so that your rotten stitches don't show. Because if you do this just on 100% cotton, it's it, there's a darn good chance it is going to show through. So that's the answer to that question. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, as you're putting your wonderful little top together, I want you to start thinking about the shapes that you're going to be doing. This this, what's up, John? Oh, he's getting bringing me questions. Let me just get through this chain of thought. I would strongly suggest 
you choose a simple shape and stick with it. At first I thought, well, maybe you could do squares, maybe you could do triangles, etc. Um, I would I would steer clear of those because then you've got the points and the corners and things like that. This these are just circles, and it's like if you think of throwing a pebble in the water, that's what's happening here. I do have this this thing from college, okay, to mark my circles. I even bought another one at the art supply store, but you can certainly use glass. I hope this doesn't drive you to drink, but when I was up at the cabin, I was having to do stuff and I didn't have it. So I used a wine glass. Empty. Here's a spool you could use. Empty. An empty wine glass. I don't know. <laughs> this is a, um, um, a thing that you put so you don't wreck the floors on your hardwood floor, you know. Just start looking around your house for templates. You don't have to to do what I'm doing. My friend Robin is going to do ovals. Uh, my friend um, Lois asked about paisleys. Yeah, I think there is one sharp corner in that, but I would try and keep it kind of organic shapes. Okay, let's take some questions here. What? Okay, thank you for bringing that up. Do we need a hoop? I am choosing not to use a hoop. When I use when I do red work, I use a hoop. And the reason I'm choosing not to use a hoop is because on the back here, um, the reason you use a hoop is so you don't scrunch it up, okay, if you pull too tight and stuff like that. But with this safety belt on the back, it's not a problem. The other thing is I like a small hoop. And if I were using a small hoop, I'd be like four inches. I'd be having to move it every 30 seconds. So I am choosing not to use a hoop. But I'm telling you, you can do what makes you comfortable. There is not just one way to do this. One person wants to use linen. Is there a specific linen that you would sell? No, we, I don't think we sell linen. No, there's not a specific linen, and I would do that so fast it'd make your head spin. Um, in fact, I think Robin came over, and I gave her some of mine, and she has some. I think linen would be exquisite. I would prep it, too, with um, Quilter Select Fabric Prep or some real lightweight thing. Again, it's not a fusible. It is you're prepping your fabric, okay? Did fabric prep come in a kit? Did fabric prep come in the kit? Yes, it does. We do sell it on its own. Yes, you got a, you got more than you need in your kit. Okay, if the wine glass isn't empty, be sure it's white wine. <laughs> I'm not going to drive you guys to drink. Okay, I took my hand embroidery book to Staples and had it spiral bound. Barb, thank you. I, I, I thank you. Sue Spargo's come spiral bound. I don't see one there, which is fabulous because you really are opening it up and I think it's under 10 bucks so I would consider doing that I'm excited to start this too Karen um, question from Karen I have the neutral fat quarters bundles and have some tan wool and neutral linens that I'm thinking of including adding flying geese curve piecing just asking for your comments on ideas because on the ideas, I haven't done this before. I probably would not combine, and I'm just talking off the top of my head. I'm going to say I'm not an expert here. <laughs> that should scare you. Probably wouldn't do the wool. I would seriously consider as, um, adding the linens. And in a sense, that's, let me hold it up. You can see it better. This is that Jennifer Sampu stuff I was talking about. That is not silk, and it's got a little sheen in it. So for those of you that played along, um, on the paper piecing kit, there's some really beautiful color. There's some really beautiful pieces in there. Beautiful pieces. Okay. Okay. Do you have a list of supplies needed? <laughs> of course I don't. <laughs> okay. You're going to need fabric. <laughs> I'm horrible. Fabric. I would get the Sasha Co needles. I would use whatever embroidery floss you want. You will be using this um, selfie race a pen because you can mark with it. Let me show you. You can mark with it, and then it goes away in a couple days, and so you don't have to wet it with water. Um, also, let me show this here. What I like about this, and I did use it, 
Oh, I did put some other stuff on top of this and it didn't work well on that, this pen. But see, I can also go like this. It will go away in a couple days. Or, be nice if I had it in frame. I can also, let's say I don't like that stitch, I can go like that and get rid of it. Now, your initial circles, you are not, or whatever shape, you are not going to use this. This is called uh, Quilter Select Self Erase Marker. You're not going to use this because it will be gone. Uh, your initial circles, I would consider getting a friction pen, okay, and using that, and or your blue ink pen, but boy, I think I'd rather do the friction. And the reason I love it is because you can mark it, right? I hope that is a friction pen. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't that be dandy? And then um, you go like this and it will go away, okay? So um, that's what I would do. I do love my lap desk. And you don't need it. You don't need it. I love my lap desk. I changed the cover on it because I can get it to the height I, I want. I used a Walmart kid lap desk before and I like this better because I can bring it up higher, you know, but you don't need it. You don't need it. Um, let me look at some more questions. So, Gail, I hope that helps you out. Um, let me go scroll down to the bottom here. Uh-oh. This is from Costa Rica and I don't uh, know yeah. habla espanol. Oh, what thread? Oh, good for you, John. Um, you can use any thread you want, embroidery thread. Again, the kit included this, but um, there's no reason you can't go to your local quilt shop or craft store and get this. You'll use two plies of it. I have, I'm looking over here, a complete closet filled with threads and nothing's, nothing is out of range. Okay, next one. Oak shot fabric. Oak shot fabric. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me show you something else. Thank you for saying that. And there's no reason it has to be um, neutrals. I mean, you can pick a color family. These were from uh, Jennifer's kit. Here's the two that are analogous. And then I might just throw a shot of this in. I know this is running long, but this is really important stuff. Look at that. It'd be beautiful. It's very linen-y feeling. I think it might even have linen in it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This is Jennifer Sampu stuff. I, I don't know. I, it, I don't know that that's true. I don't know that there's a name for it. I mean, I know we threw it in the kits, um, and I don't know if that was a Suzanne thing or a. It came like that. I don't know. Okay, what else? Okay, so what's going to happen is on Wednesday we're going to start marking and stitching. All right. Um, on the 10th, um, Barbara Black, her exhibit, we love Barbara Black, and I did an interview with her. I'll show you another stitch because the stitching just doesn't take that long. Oh, one other thing I want you to do is if you're, not even if you're new to this, get an extra little piece of fabric, prep it so that you can do practice stitches on it. That's what I would do, all right? Um, let's see. Alabama, gracias. Uh-oh, there's another one from Maritza that's Spanish. John knows a little bit of Spanish. I know, no habla espanol. Would grunge be too thick? I don't think so, Rose. I don't think, you know, the worst you can do, my guess, Rose, is you've got grunge in your stash. Just pull some out and stitch on it and see if you, you like how it looks, okay? In fact, I think it might be wonderful. All right, any other questions here? I'm just... Tightwad me. There's no tightwad. What are you talking about, Carla? I think you're funny. Um, and the only reason I chose silk was I just happen to have a love affair with silk and wool right now. You can do anything you want. That's why we're calling it Make It Your Own. Make It Your Own Embroidery. So your assignment, prep your silk or your fabric, sew your top together, I mean, if you had to, you could even just do this, you know, maybe off-centered a little bit. So do what you want. Um, if you have a library, I would go and get some of their, those books just to see. Um, I am left-handed, so all you lefties are lucky. All you righties, I will talk you through it, all right? 
So I've been doing this for a hundred million years and I can, I can do it. Oh my gosh, there's more here. Click on translation. Where's translation? Hmm. That's interesting. Comments and reaction. I don't know. I'm going to have to find that out. Um, what needle threaders? I'll show you what I've got. You're going to die laughing. Talk about, oh, hold on. There are a ton of needle threaders out there, and inevitably, I always break them. So I got these off Amazon for like 10 bucks. <laughs> so, because I break them. I break them all the time. So um, I got these little metal ones. Um, I don't like them so much. I don't like these so much. But yeah, I just have a, a ton of these. And we didn't throw them in the kit because if you broke it, you'd be mad. <laughs> But they're, you know, and yes, there's beautiful ones out there too. I'm sure Bowen has a beautiful one. Maybe we need to do that at Quilter Select, but they do break, okay? Will the video be available after today? Absolutely. Absolutely. They were, everything we do resides on the site. And speaking of that, uh, this year's Block of the Month by Wendy Williams, uh, make sure you print out everything and or download everything everything by the end of the year, but all of Barbara's videos will remain. My friend Lois asked me that because she had to move and she kind of got behind. So we're not going to take the videos away because they're such great learning. Okay, just trying to address the thread question in Spanish. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Embroidery floss. Okay, yeah, embroidery floss. You can use anything. I mean, anything. It's 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 sinful how much money you can spend on this. Why is the white iron-on stuff necessary? Hillary, if you don't, let's start with silk. If you don't do it with the silk, the silk is going to fall apart right in front of your eyes. It's just going to shred. If you're doing a lightweight cotton, you would want to perhaps put it on the back so that you're your the underbelly doesn't show and or and you can use batting but for silk it is imperative that you use this stuff and i would say probably linen too um i haven't worked with linen yet that way but my gut tells me that dental glossers for braces will also work too huh are you, are you talking about this stuff huh Okay, clover. Carol uses clover. Okay, any more questions? And I know we're running a little bit long, but okay. So on Wednesday, we're going to mark. We're going to mark. We're going to do some basic stitches and move on. Friday, we have Barbara Black. And then, um, oh, on Monday, John has some eye surgery. So um, nothing dramatic, but I will not be here because I have to take him to the doctor. But then on Wednesday, we'll do it. Uh, on Friday, Claudia File, just all, we have just great stuff for you to get us through the holiday season. Uh, can you use brocade fabric? I am not familiar for, oh, dental flossers to, to floss your, to, dental flossers. Yeah, to thread your needle. Um, Mar Maria, your assignment is to get some brocade out and use it. My thought with brocade is I don't know. You tell us. And Barbara has set up a place in the forum where you can post if you're a star member. It's how we keep out spammers. And we can see what you're doing. So I'm very excited about that. Threading the needles. Okay. I, I think we're good. I think I've blathered on enough. Um, if I've seriously missed something, uh, you can email me at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -E at gmail. I'm going to show you something real sweet. So the other day, Lennox was here for like 15 minutes, and she is doing her thing there. She, she has the attention span of a gnat, okay? <laughs> I was going to say that. Um, but we did Door County Cherries, and she's stitching away. She's also using that glow light around her neck, which she loved. I just love this picture, but then guess what? Then guess what? Look at this. Gail Thomas made this quilt, and it's my sister and I 
sitting at my grandma's knee, stitching as a little girl. And she got the three, Gail Thomas sadly is no longer with us. And um, this is actually from a photograph of of us when we were kids at grandma's. Um, my sister's no longer with us, so um, the, she, and, and stitching did not stick with her. But I'm the one on the right, and I just absolutely adore this because look at the intent. Look at the intent. And one of you wrote me and said that uh, you kind of gave up on it because your mom was a perfectionist or your grandma. I'm not going to do that to you. This is all about fun. All about fun. Okay, for batting, yes, I'm using a very thin batting if I choose to use it. There's a lot of options here, people, a lot of options. And so with that, I say, let's play. Let's enjoy this holiday season, snuggle by my ugly Christmas tree with the bent top, but by the fireplace, stitching my heart out. Okay, and what kind of battings am I using? I'm just using a super thin batting, like a cotton, super thin, super thin. Um, I don't want you to have to, I'm sure in your stash you have batting somewhere. So have a good one. It's supposed to rain today. Yay. And I'll see you Wednesday.